Titration is a common technique which is used in volumetric analysis. Classically, it involves a burette and is normally employed when you have one solution of known volume and concentration and another solution of known volume but unknown concentration. Before carrying out your titration, you need to make up your standard solution. This is the solution whose volume and concentration are both known. This is normally made up in a volumetric flask. In many cases, the standard solution will have been made up for you already. We're going to go through the process of setting up a titration. Firstly, the burette should be rinsed twice with tap water. Note that we're doing this in the sink in this case, but you should follow the instructions given to you by your teacher. Then we need to rinse the burette twice with distilled water. In this case, the distilled water is being dispensed from a wash bottle, but again the precise instructions may vary from classroom to classroom. For acid-based titrations, the acid is usually put into the burette, as the alkali can react with grease on glass taps in older burettes. However, this is less of an issue with more modern burettes, which have PTFE or Teflon taps. Next, we need to fill the burette with the correct reagent, which in this case is hydrochloric acid. It can be helpful to lower the burette to the floor so that the top is at eye level rather than stretching and potentially breaking it. It also helps to use a small plastic funnel, as the walls of the burette are very fragile and if you use a glass funnel there's a risk of breakages. Next, we need to add our other reagent to a clean conical flask. In this case, we're accurately adding 25 centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide solution using a volumetric pipette. Next, we need to add an indicator to identify the end point of our titration. In this case, the indicator we're adding is phenolphthalein. Now we can perform our titration. If you're right-handed, turn the tap with your left hand and swirl the conical flask with your right hand until you reach the end point. If you're left-handed, then you should use the opposite hands for these processes. Some teachers may prefer for you to hold the flask or the tap in a slightly different way, so please make sure you follow their instructions carefully. Here we can see the solution turning from pink to colourless as we add the acid from the burette to our solution of sodium hydroxide. The end point in this reaction is signified by a pale pink colour. This titration is now complete. We can then read the volume of solution that we've added from the burette, which in this case is 5.2 cm3. In most cases, the first titration is what we call a range finder. This gives you a rough idea of what volume of solution you need to add from the burette. You can then perform more accurate titrations afterwards. Note that you may need to refill the burette before carrying out subsequent titrations, and it's wise to use a clean conical flask each time. Your teacher will give you clear instructions as to what is expected of you in terms of the number of titrations that have to be performed. There are many different types of titration that can be carried out, so it's important to make sure you listen carefully as it's easy to make mistakes.